God have mercy upon us. Come on, see for you again, man. Judicial one of the deliver judgment. I don't tell you. You get some news where you go here like this, you go be like say make you close your ear. And they will force the news for your ear. It was here. <laughs> well, we go deliver judgment, I beg. This is not too much. Nobody Every day we must hear one bad news. And here's the house one go and strike again. <laughs> I mean, they don't even go already. Eh? I said it's good, they punch up the body. You don't like, you never chop since they go cut it. They say, not you say, see, you are not eating today. You say, ah, are they chopped before? <laughs> Some people go down say, eh, me they even go that strike, me will go also. Hey, you know before, to study law, made it like seven years. Now I'm fifteen five, fifteen months, five months, fifteen years, five months with indefinite. I don't know. You have to have capacity. <laughs> you cannot determine how, how many years where you go there for school now. <laughs> how dare you? Now you go to call us. Alpha! Now go strike. Ask the test. We never know. <laughs> no, wait first. We shall see. <laughs> then I did it. Then go. Let's go. Let us say, okay. In 2023, you'll be done. <laughs> how dare you? How you defeated the man? What's the place? I say this would even be the same. What's the same place? Students are rejoicing. Oh, go strike. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard. It's very hard to defend their pieces, defend these people. They know they make a music for these people self where they where they where they defend them. I hear say one of the persons now where they are point say the person still be youth copper. <laughs> Is a young person, man. They are giving a youth chance. I mean, yes, in very young. Yeah, they are giving youth son. The way where they take give youth where this is the one years old. Man, where the minister of youth? So that that kind young guy. He never had. He never had to defend this people. <laughs> one of them talks. Say, yes, Rufa. You know, say Rufa. They go ask you question. Where you say you know go know what they ask again. Yeah. The woman talks. Say, yes. I will, I, will, I, will, I will deliver palettes with GPS. <laughs> I will deliver palettes with GPS. <laughs> you might know we have to start again. <laughs> Maybe you do something finish, people they try make them look say, okay, we go consider them. I mean, we no consider. They still they do on top. <laughs> Now, like eight, for a PC hand, mm. we'll be like a woman we're catching husband, we are a husband, they cheat. Uh -huh. Converse, talk say, I no do again, come go. <laughs> People come, they go, they beg on the husband behalf, they tell us, say, come, come back. back, your husband is a nice person. Yeah, the husband, the eh, husband, they beg too, baby, come back. Mm. The girl can decide, okay, let me pity my husband, <laughs> come back. As he come back, you see husband with two girls <laughs> <laughs> for their matrimonial bed. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I'm mad. The husband will talk. The husband will not even get involved. He'll say, ah, baby, it was when you went out that I started it. But let me finish because I've started already. You don't come, make I come. Mamma mia! Real quickly, your first task, part of many other tasks, will be to administer palliatives. What's your take as regards the madness going on with the sharing of the palliative? You can see the conundrum with people being hurt, being pushed around. Some can't even get anything. That's one. Number two, a very another important task coming up to you will be the $800 million loan that had been released before that the president wanted to push out to the social register and he stopped. What's the conversation? Bring us up to speed as regards that money. And what would be your idea as regards pushing that money around. So I think um, first as it concerns the palliatives, we need to rework the logistics. Um, 
In the past, I have been exposed to programs such as the immunization programs in Cross River State and in other places around the country where we have to um, take health care to people's doorstep, immunize people at their doorstep. I think the um, uh, aspect of having people come together or come to one particular location to pick up their palliatives is not really very helpful. In my own of course, for us, we will think that it will be better off to deliver this, improve on the logistics, and deliver it to their doorstep where they live. That way, they can sign off on it, and you are sure that these families have received it. Of course, technology can tell exactly where a person is, where he's delivering, using the GPS and the rest of it to really identify How if this has this? been delivered to, to this location. How are you going to do this? How? Because technology is nebulous. How precisely are you going to ensure that they deliver the okay, doorstep so of like, people like, like where I we said, don't have accurate numbering system in homes in Nigerian streets? You can get to the street and have number 21 and number 44 at the back, at the front. So how do we do it? How? Okay, like I said, it's a GPS thing. It's not just about um, the numbering. So from the GPS, using there are many applications. Hello, Nigerians. This is just the beginning. The judiciary is the only institution that has all it takes to save this country from the threat of implosion. All eyes have been on the judiciary because of Nigeria's respect for the rule of law. It does not mean that the members of the presidential election tribunal are in a better position in this case to tell Nigerians the person who won the presidential election. Nigerians do not wait for the court to tell them the winner of any election. It is the electorate that should tell the court because they know more than the court. Nigerians voted. In fact, let me emphasize here that without prejudice to any party, whether in power or out of power, that every political party had what they call situation room. In their situation rooms, they had election collection centers from different worlds to local governments, to states, and to the federal. And I don't think those challenging the outcome of the election are ignorant of what they are saying. And if you have listened to various political parties, they will tell you that the result they have on hand differs from what INEC have announced. Despite the fact that INEC have insisted that they have done their job well. Hence, according to the electoral law, it now falls on the judiciary. But we want the judiciary to know that it is not as if Nigerians did not know who they voted for. It's not as if Nigerians did not witness some of their comrades being denied the opportunity to vote in certain parts of Nigeria. It's not as if Nigerians are not aware that over 80 people were killed, men, during the last election. It is not as if Nigerians do not know that some people were stabbed. Some of the election in certain places were not as even announced in the polling unit. Hence, what Nigerians simply expect the judiciary to do is to take all this to cognizance in what? In delivering justice. We deplore the threats by a candidate in the election against the judiciary that if he is removed for not measuring up to the demands of the electoral law of the land, there will be chaos and anarchy. Nobody is bigger than this country. Nigeria belongs to all Nigerians. The use of threats, the use of subtle threats, is anti-democratic. And we want to emphasize it here that the diaspora community, African diaspora community, will not tolerate that. And let me say this, for those who may think that what is this African diaspora community all about? Why are they involved? Why are they interested? 
If you listen to the Central Bank Governor of Nigeria as of day before his or two days ago, you will hear him make reference to diaspora remittances as part of their strategic plan in mitigating the, the floundering exchange rates of the Naira. A committee of Nigerians that remit over $22 billion into this economy where the national annual export value is $18 billion has greater impact on this country. More than many people can. They are Nigerians who have lived here, who have relations here, who have come here every day, who have investments here. They are Africans who want their home countries to grow. Hence, they are critical stakeholders and must be respected. And they are here to say that no one Nigerian is bigger than all of Nigerians. The subtle threat that if one person is removed and the rule of law is observed, will bring anarchy is unheard of and cannot be tolerated. Irrespective of who that person is, some people have ruled this country before and they are no more here. Some have ruled their, this, the country at the level of states, they are no more their state governors. Some are in government today, they will not be here tomorrow. But one thing that is consistent is that this country will remain and no one person's interest or position or ambition should be more than and greater than this, uh, the interests of this country. And let me say that, having said that the removal may instigate anarchy, we must also say that those who are calling for anarchy should be careful because we know that no person have the monopoly of violence. As much as we recognize that today, on various social media platforms and media, we have seen some of the I'm waiting talks. I'm waiting talks. Please emphasize. I'm waiting talks. Who have been given, who have been supporting some of these candidates, given opportunity to appear in the villa and given opportunity to speak on issues concerning Nigeria. Some of these people, non state actors, have threatened other Nigerians on behalf of some of these candidates. And we are in a democracy. And I guess these are some of the things that are given impetus to the statement that if some people are removed, there will be anarchy in the land. But we want to remind them, as I said earlier, that Nigeria is bigger than anybody, and no Nigerian is greater than anybody. Diaspora action for democracy in Africa wants the world to know that that will not be tolerated. In a nutshell, no matter how or whatever the opinions may be, we encourage the judiciary to do the right thing. The judicial process is part of the electoral process, irrespective of the fact that we have some people that have already been inaugurated as governors, senators, president. It does not remove from the fact that the judicial process is part of the process. And some people think it's a fait accompli because they have been inaugurated. Diaspora action for democracy in Africa is saying that is not the truth we must see that the right thing is done. Secondly, we did mention the ongoing issue in Niger. Niger is a hot bottom issue for ECOWAS, and now we have various interests, both local and international, trying to intervene. And as Africans living across the world, outside the continent. Diaspora action for democracy in Africa. They are interested in what is happening in Niger. Because today, 
The crisis that started in Libya have ravaged the entire Sahel and may actually have been intrinsically involved in the crisis in Niger today. And as Africans who are making their contributions to the development of their countries and Africa, we have a say here. And this is why we're saying that the regional leaders indeed have had their emergency meetings and uh, President Tinubu being the chair of ECOWAS have also made the world to know what is on the table, including the use of military force, and has actually spoken about a standby force by ECOWAS as one of the options on the table. We all cherish democracy. The aspiration for democracy in Africa believes in democracy, actually wants democracy. But when we have interactable issues like this on our continent, the ways and measures we take to, what, to deal with them, to ameliorate the situation, is critical. We already have many conflicts in different parts of Africa that is what stunting development.